Hello? Hello? Do you know the password? Uh, open sesame? No. In like Flynn. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> hey, this episode of Backyard Bartender, we're at Underbelly at Yellow Belly. We're going to talk about speakeasies and make some spirit forward drinks from the Prohibition era on this episode with Brenda O'Reilly. I'm Brian O'Connell. Stick around. You're going to learn a lot about Underbelly. You're going to learn a lot about Yellow Belly and you're going to learn a lot about Prohibition cocktails on this edition of Backyard Bartenders. Join me behind the bar. Welcome to Backyard Bartender, I'm Brian O'Connell and this season we've been on the road visiting some wonderfully unique bars in the old city and uh, today we're at a very special place, I would say one of the oldest buildings in St. John's, one that survived the Great Fire and today we're going to talk about speakeasies and someone who knows all about that, uh, you've probably seen her before on Scoff Off on uh, Rogers Cable, but you probably know her more from O'Reilly's and any other number of projects. Brenda O'Reilly joins us. Hi. Hello. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Thanks Welcome for doing this. Welcome to the Underbelly. Well, I'm thrilled with this. So I, I, I've been here once before, but I didn't really know the history of the Underbelly. And uh, you, uh, before we started, uh, told me a little bit about it. This is an amazing building. This building has a tremendous amount of history. This building is one of the oldest buildings in North America. It survived the first fire in 1846 and it totally is a place where the fire stopped going west on the Great Fire of 1892. Okay. So it's got a phenomenal history and it was built in the early 1700s. Wow. Yeah. Uh, if you come in here you'll notice these huge beams. These are the original beams mm -hmm. but what's most unique about them is they're charred and I can only assume that's from the fire. From the Great Fire, yeah, 1892. So the building was rebuilt in 1847-48, and but the 1892 fire, the, it came was going west. Of course, it, de it devoured 3,500 buildings in, yeah. in St. John's. Anyway, this is the place where it stopped going west. There's, it's built on a river here, Bex Cold, and um, this was all ground level where we are now. Okay. It's not ground level now because we're below, you know, underneath uh, George Street, we'll say. Um, but it, it, they fire swooped in here, caught these logs on fire, but it got put out. The residents heroically got in there, splashed out water from the riverbanks, and this is marks the spot where the Great Fire stopped going west. Incredible, incredible yeah. history. What was this building used for? So over the years, there's been many things. Um, it was a hotel at one point, okay. in the 18, like in the mid-1800s. Um, in 1902, it was called J.J. O'Reilly's. And no relation that I can find belong to me, although they do spell their name the same way I do. Okay. Um, but I haven't been able to pinpoint who that family is. Uh, but they were just like the general store. Yeah. And it was a shoemaker at one point. It was a, um, it was a uh, W.J. Rendell's uh, sporting goods store at one point, signs upstairs on our pub floor. And of course, we mo uh, mostly might remember it from being a seafood galley. Seafood uh, Galley, yeah. okay. Yeah, it was right. here in the, uh, probably in the 80s, okay. uh, on the corner right here on, top, on Water Street. Uh, so this building has a storied past, for sure. It's been a lot of things. It was a church at one point as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you look at George Street back in the day, and you look at George Street now, I mean, this, this building is, uh, I, I suppose, one of the pillars of George Street. It's one of the pillars of the city, to be honest, because our corner is the most photographed corner in the city. Okay. So not only is it the corner of George and Water and our building so spectacular there on the side. Yeah, yeah. It's also got the Ron Hines statue across yes, it. Of course, yeah. So this corner is very, it's the highest pedestrian corner in the city and it's the most photographed corner in the city. Incredible. Yeah. Now you uh, are more comfortable in the kitchen because you yes. are a chef, <laughs> yes. but uh, today we're going to get you to put on the uh, bartender hat. Well, I've been known to make a drink or two. All <laughs> right, well, there you go. But now we're going to talk about speakeasies because you've made this into a speakeasy. Yeah, so Craig and I, uh, you know, my husband and business partner, we love speakeasies. Yeah. I like the whole story and the romance of it all and the whole, like, I don't know, the underground feeling of it. So when we were wondering what to do with this room, we thought, a speakeasy. Yeah. It's underground, it's hidden. Yeah. Speakeasies, you know, came out of Prohibition. Yeah. Um, you know, mostly from the United States Prohibition from 1920 to 1933. And, uh, and they were like, you know, you couldn't, it was prohibition on all alcohol. So of course people didn't like that, right? So, <laughs> you know, that's when the mob sort of took over and started to bring in contraband liquor from Canada, from UK and Ireland and the like. And they started making pot still bourbon and they started making bathtub gin. Gin, yes. Yeah, and, okay. uh, you know, so all these things came out of the uh, prohibition time, right? So it was really quite interesting. So this is what this is. It's a throwback to that. It's a 1920s style speakeasy. So a tip of the hat to the speakeasy. So are we going to make a, a speakeasy cocktail or two? We're going to make three very classic speakeasies. 
Love it. Easy well, cocktails. What are we making first? So the first one we're starting with is the sidecar. Okay. And so it was named after uh, the attachment to the motorcycle, mm -hmm. that little side thing where people sat in it, and sure. you know we had a second person driving along with them, and uh, and it came out of the. Um, the uh, Ritz Hotel in Paris in the 20s. Wow. And of course, there wasn't prohibition there, so they were, you know, people who could afford yeah. to go out and stuff. People were making cocktails during that time. So they became known as uh, the prohibition era cocktails. Okay. A lot of these. So it starts with ice? Starts with now, ice. Is it me, or did a lot of prohibition cocktails, were they heavy on alcohol? Oh, they're spirit forward for sure. Yeah, a spirit they're, forward. How nice to say that. Yeah, <laughs> they're definitely spirit forward. There's no doubt about it. Right. Um, I think people were like, can't get enough, and let's have as much we can at one time. <laughs> uh, you know, and a lot of times. So this is a sidecar. So it's got uh, cognac, yep. uh, bourbon, you know, anything like that, yep. um, and some triple sec or Cointreau, any orange type. Mm. Wow! Cure. You could probably use Grand Marnier. Okay, as well, and this is a you. beautiful coupe glass, right? Yes, that's a coupe and this glass. This crystal too, right? Eh? That came from you know the story. It was, it's named after Marie Antoinette, her her breast. I'm sorry. That's where the coupe glass came oh, from. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're well, welcome for that information. You're learning something new every day. Can I ask why? <laughs> I don't know who the artist was who came up with it, and I, uh, I got to look okay. that up. Um, of course, it's got, uh, you know, twice as much bourbon as it has. Um, so how much uh, Hennessy did you put in there? How much triple sec? So I put two ounces of Hennessy, one ounce of triple sec, and I'm putting in an ounce of, of lemon uh, okay. juice. And, of course, now we're going to uh, shake. Now, we've rimmed the, sh the glass with sugar. Okay. Because this is obviously a, a bitter, you know. See, a, this is all alcohol. There's some lemon juice in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, it's, it's not all alcohol. It's, the, next, uh, the next shaking drink we're doing, you're going to shake. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, you, know, you said, you know, they use, they were, they were what do you call it, spirit forward. Spirit forward, and yeah. Because people, you know, wanted to, they, the speakeasy may have closed down just like that, so you wanted to make sure you had something to fortify yourself. With. Right, and I think at the time it was just, alcohol was just... Uh, now, I'm always curious, so what am I going to taste the most of here? I would think the cognac. Yeah. And uh, and I've got a little orange garnish in there for you now because it is tr triple sec or Cointreau, whichever yeah. you're using, has an, or it's an orange base. Uh, I just want to point out that if you do this, you can actually smell uh, the drink. And this is uh, one of those things that you probably wouldn't have more than one. It's a sipping drink. Uh, oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's um, the sugar around the room should take some of the acid out of it. Yeah, you know, it's not bad. I was no, expecting it to be harsh, right? No, it's really good. But it really isn't. It's very, very tasty, and it's uh, the, the sugar helps. But I, I would have expected with the Hennessy and that, I would have had, it would have been a little more burning and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But it's not. It's very nice. Well, this is really sweet. Yeah. I mean, so a triple sec does bring it down. So that would. Yeah. But this is a very traditional 1920s speakeasy era cocktail. Okay, and. Uh, uh, the uh, the drink itself and the glass itself it all lends itself to the entire experience of uh, of a speakeasy drink. Mm -hmm. uh, how many speakeasy drinks would there have been? I mean, hundreds, it, thousands, what? No, not as many as that. I don't. You know, most of them are steeped like the 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 um, the Manhattan. All those would have came after, right? Okay. But um, you know, some of the ones that are are the slow. Anything with gin. Gin was very, very, very yeah. popular because but what they would do with gin is they would add a lot of like we're going to make a drink with gin next and there, there's some effervescent stuff added to it because the gin was really cheap gin because okay. it was the bathtub gin and you can make gin pretty quickly right gin is one of the fastest okay we, uh, that's why we say do not try this at home okay <laughs> <laughs> right but it was just it, it could be made in a few hours right yeah. gin can really yes yeah so gin is like and it can be you got to watch what you're doing with gin because okay. you know it could be well, dangerous well this right? this show is not only an education for you <laughs> but it's an education for me i've learned about marie antoinette her breasts and a wonderful drink that was uh, made back in the day in the speakeasies. When we come back, we're going to talk about gin and gin during the Prohibition and a little bit more history from here at Underbelly at Yellow Belly in downtown St. John's with Brenda O'Reilly. We'll be back right after this. Cheers. Welcome back to Underbelly. It's Backyard Bartender. We're on the road this season. I'm Ryan O'Connell with Brenda O'Reilly, and we're at Underbelly, which is a speakeasy-themed bar, and speakeasies came about during the Prohibition. Now, they are around North America now because 
I've heard people talk about it. You had to say a password to a waiter or a waitress in a, in a particular business, and they'll say yes one moment, and then someone will lead you to the speakeasy. That's right. And so we go to as many of them as we can when we travel so and seek them out first. Why, why am I the last person on earth to know this? Where have you been, and what are the passwords? They're everywhere, and you don't always have to have a password, but you gotta. it's a secret how you get there. Okay. So the word speakeasy came from, shh, don't tell too many people, because it was against the law. Remember, it was sure. during Prohibition time. And a lot of times they were down alleys, down a couple of stairs, underneath stuff where you had to do a secret knock or you had to know the password to get in, the little window would open up and they'd say password. Of course, you see that in all the 30s movies, right? Well, yeah, so so, so okay. there's one in Vegas um, and it's the mob, it's in the mob museum, it's down in the basement of that. And so it's very mob oriented and of course the mob were very significant in Prohibition sure. time, as we all know, and it's where they made most of their wealth, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, but the little wicket opens up and, and anyway, they'll say, you'll say, oh, can we come in? They'll look, wrong word, close. And then it's like, Please? Okay. <laughs> and like, it. Anyway, they have a drink that they serve in a, in a book, and I have to say that I'm stealing the idea for our new speakeasy we're opening, Harbor Grace, uh, in the jail and the, the courthouse. And uh, because it suits it. Sure, and anyway, it does, so yeah. the drink comes out in a, in a book. You know how you used to bring in like a, you know, a secret, a key or a, a knife or, yes, or something whatever, in the book yeah. to help the prisoners. So anyway, and when you open up this book, it's hollow and your drink is inside. Incredible. Very, very. And there's other ones where you press a doorbell. We were one in, um, another one in Vegas, and it's just uh, a, a Chinese tea shop. And then uh, you look and you press a certain foot and it opens, the door goes in, but you got to know what you're doing to find it. Oh, wow. So they're usually hidden or their password. My or daughter tells me there's one in Halifax. There is. And she's told me she's been there and I said, well, where is it? She said, I'm not gonna tell you, Beth. You gotta find it. And I went, oh, okay. So now I'll quiz Brenda on that after yeah. the show and uh, try and find out. So, okay, uh, let's just talk quickly about the courthouse and Harbor Race and all of that. When is that gonna happen? Well, you know, soon we're gonna do some pop-up stuff this yeah. winter and fall um, and we'll be opening next summer for, for the whole project, okay. you know. Um, but yeah, but we were always intended for that to be a speakeasy and a venue for mm -hmm. events. So the basement, the ground floor will be the smaller courtroom will be a speakeasy. Mm -hmm. That's really loungy. And then the jail cells. So you got the yin and the yang. Oh, the so jail you, cells. Yeah. So you can sit in the jail cell and enjoy your food and beverage. Because it's really quite cool. All right. It's really quite unique. What are we doing here? So we are making what they call the last word. The last word. Last word. And so also very spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering why it's the last word. <laughs> yeah. What do we got? Uh, uh, We've got a gin, a dry gin, chartreuse. Okay. And then we have a um, cherry uh, liqueur. So yeah, so spirit forward. Holy smokes. Right. So right. it's, uh, you know, and the, and the chartreuse is really quite, you know, botanical or whatever yeah, you want to call it. I, I have to be honest, you know, I, I can't think of a time when I've had a drink with chartreuse in it. You know? really? so, yeah, no, I, I, oh, wow. and maybe I have and didn't know it, but uh, so you're chilling this beautiful glass, and I gotta say, the glasses you're using are phenomenal. Well, they're of, this, of the Prohibition style glass, yeah. that's what they would use. That's really more like, um, what's, the, what's that really wealthy guy? Um, remember his name oh. now but he threw all the big parties so we're putting in the uh, gin Howard Hughes in the or shoe. one of those or uh, yeah back I'm, in the day yeah oh, his name has escaped me now at the moment but so these are basically almost equal portions of those things and then of course to balance it all out we have some lime juice <laughs> of course because you know you have to have the lime juice so it's not all alcohol <laughs> this is that okay. yeah do you, want, do you want to shake this one sure Old top, so not how, how do how fast do I have to shake it not you know, just not too too fast but you got to shake it for about 10 seconds so my shaker down. face I'm going to get rid of these lights on while you're doing that. I think that's it. All right. All right. So this is, again, spirit forward, gin, chartreuse, and a cherry liqueur. That's right. And it is called The Last Word. The Last Word. And if I'm not back in the next segment, you'll know why. And you get a little cherry <laughs> oh, skewer. Oh, look at that. How lovely is that? Right. And, and you know, you, you talk about a presentation when you're having a cocktail. We always talk about the entire experience of having a drink before dinner. And uh, it, it leads to a, a nice meal. You know, it always leads you mm -hmm. to a, a, a wonderful, and the cherries are great. So this is, uh, this is gonna be fantastic. I, oh, wow. You see the ice coming off? It's cool. I do, off. yes. And I gotta tell you, that's kind of strong. <laughs> It's got three alcohols in it. Oh, I know. I was kind of expecting it to be a little sm smoother. But Perhaps uh, I should have put more lime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. It's very good. I'm it's very good. I'm trying that one off camera. But, <laughs> 
<laughs> Remember when I said the last one, you probably have just one of those? Maybe just a half one of those, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to ask what the alcohol content is, but I'll tell you what. It is a very nice drink. It is very refreshing. There is three ounces of alcohol in three that, ounces, and okay. there's only one ounce of lime. Oh, <laughs> so the lime <laughs> balances it out. So again, this is called The Last Word, and for obvious reasons. So there we go. Uh, these are great drinks, and I, I didn't realize with Prohibition how spirit forward all of these drinks were, because as you well, say- Well, the Singapore Sling came out of Prohibition, too. Yeah. So they're Is not, that right? Yeah. So they're not all like, hundred, you know, spirit yeah, forward. Yeah. Whiskey was big because they were getting down the states, they were getting whiskey from Ireland and from Canada. Okay. So Canadian whiskey was big and speaky. And of course, uh, in Newfoundland, we played a big part in uh, Prohibition, and, and, and many a song has been written about Newfoundlanders, uh, you know, spiriting alcohol into the United States. Right, because we did have Prohibition here in Newfoundland yes. from 1917 to 1924. Yeah. And it was part of a whole world uh, thing about trying to control the consumption of alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we got caught up in that because that of the British Commonwealth. That was the British whole temperance movement, all yes, of that. Yeah, right. Okay. And, uh, but in 1924, we stopped having Prohibition, but the state started in the 20s and went right to 1933. So they were in Prohibition period for a long time. Jack Daniels is still made in, a, in an alcohol-free uh, county. You're kidding. No, it's true. Yeah. How, how is you, that possible? They still don't sell any alcohol. In that county, but they make it in that county. They make it in that county. Uh, let's go yeah. back to bathtub gin. I yeah. mean, you say that was an easy one to make? Yeah, it, gin is an easy, gin, gin and vodka are the easiest two yeah. alcohols to make, and um, they're quick. They don't take a long... So why the bathtub? Oh, well, I guess that was the biggest vessel they had. <laughs> We were in another speakeasy one time, and Craig ordered the drink, and it, and it was called bathtub gin something or other, and the drink came out in a little tiny glass bathtub. bathtub. It was really cool, you know, with the four little <laughs> legs, you know, the old bathtub. Anyway, it was really cool. I can't imagine that a gin made like that was of any quality. No, so they would camouflage with other things, Yeah. right? Yeah. So this would have been a cheap gin, and they would have had these two other flavors okay. in, in with that gin. And gin has come on in a, such a huge way now. It's, it's, it's oh. like it's popping up everywhere, and new, and. Uh, 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 varieties of gin. Oh, are gin is very popular, and of course, you know, nowadays we can get so much more product than we could in the twenties, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but gin is so popular. A few years ago, it was one of the fastest growing spirits. Yeah. Of course, other things now are taking over the spirit category. The ready to drink stuff, you yeah. know, all those. Uh, yes. Okay, you're seeing a lot of those with yeah. uh, alcohol already mixed in. Yeah, them. they're ready. And does stuff. that affect the business? Does that change your business model any, or? No, we carry them, yeah. right? So we do carry them as an alternative because people, if you if you don't have what they want, they'll stop coming. Sure. So you got to you got to. Yeah kind of adjust yeah, as you're going yeah, along. Yeah, yeah cuz as you know Yellow Belly uh, it makes a uh, fantastic beer. Well, mm -hmm. not just one, but many fantastic That's beers. Right. And a cider. And a cider, yeah, too. So yeah. you like like that. <laughs> all of that and all of that's available here at Underbelly as well. That's right. right. We do have all that available here right. at the Underbelly and also you can just get a simple rum and coke. Yeah. Right? And if but you want a little lime with it then you've got a Cuba Libre. <laughs> <laughs> The woman is a wealth of knowledge. All right, this is the last word, and now we know why it's called the last word. A delicious drink, nonetheless, and you'll see that uh, pop up on your screen. You want to give that a try at home. When we come back, we're going to do what? The Mary Pickford. I'm sorry, the Mary Pickford? That goes back to what, the 1920s? That's right. All right, um, silent movie star, Mary Pickford. Wasn't she from Canada? She was. All right, we're going to talk about that when we come back here on Backyard Bartender. Please stay with us. Cheers. Welcome back to Backyard Bartender, and now I know what Elton John and who he meant when he wrote the song, I'm Still Standing. <laughs> because I'm still standing. Uh, spirit forward drinks, we're talking about speakeasies, and we're talking about drinks of the prohibition with uh, Brenda O'Reilly, and you know Brenda from uh, oh so many things. Uh, of course, O'Reilly's uh, uh, Yellow Belly, you're involved now in a great project at Harbor Grace, which yeah. is going to start up later this fall, I guess, or, yeah. or over the winter months, so people will be able to do that. It's a big project, so it's yeah. going to take a few years to get the yeah. whole project done, but we've got parts of it ready to go. And you guys seem to take on these massive projects. I remember when you were renovating this building, it was like it was a long process, right? This was the money pit. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. But it well was. worth it? Was, when we bought this building, it was condemned and ready for demolition. No. But we set out to save it, and we did. And it took us five years, three months, and 11 days to open. Wow. Yeah. So well, we just, kudos did, it. To you we just did it with our fingers crossed and a lot of hard work. Because you saved a, a beautiful historic building 
and you know we, we see as cities grow we sometimes lose focus of that right yeah well you know Craig and I really like the heritage and yeah. so we live in a heritage house and you know even the summers building that frugal signs and part yeah. of O'Reilly's and, and even the O'Reilly's building I mean that was O'Keefe's grocery That's store right, it's been years. many things over yeah. the years and we've restored that whole property as well so it's uh, yeah we do like uh, old properties and the interesting thing about George Street it continues to change it continues to evolve even though it does it stays the same yeah. if you not notice there's a lot of anchors that have not ever changed still there yeah, right yeah, and sure. um, they might modernize and change with the time sure. you know for the customer base but they're still the brand names are still there okay. which is really good we're gonna go back in time now to a, a name I remember from watching the Beverly Hillbillies kids ask your mom and dad um, there was a, a, a reference to a character she was a silent movie star from Canada and her name was Mary Pickford and Mary Pickford was uh, one of the big stars of the silent movies good friends with Charlie Chaplin yeah that's right and uh, this drink uh, harkens back to her we've talked about a fellow who used to have these big parties all the time it was Gatsby right the it great Gatsby, Gatsby. Yes. Okay. so that was all from that era and that was yeah. around the prohibition era as well right? that's right yeah and so this drink the Mary Pickford um, was named in Havana Cuba okay and um, so they say like the story there's several stories about this this particular cocktail they say that she was there with her husband at the time and Charlie Chaplin and a few others and they were doing movies and they were all at this one bar and anyway they named this drink this particular drink I guess they were doing concoctions up mm -hmm. for them and they called this the Mary Pick Pickford and then um, but then there's other stories that say she wasn't there at all because she didn't even shoot a movie in, in Havana ever okay so, so so but anyway either way it was named after her okay okay <laughs> so I'm sure her name came up and this is why it's called the Mary uh, do you think people like Charlie Chaplin and the great Gatsby had trouble getting their hands on alcohol Alcohol back during the prohibition. No, but there was no prohibition in in Cuba. Well, of course, the time, there wasn't. Right? No, so right, then right, they were right. going to London and places like that. So this is why these drinks were coming out of Paris and places like okay, where there wasn't okay. any prohibition. So uh, this contains. Um, yeah. So this is also um, <laughs> a spirit forward, but not as much. Okay. Um, this one's a little on the sweeter side. All right. It does have some pineapple juice in it. Now you talked about this cherry drink before we came on, uh, and this drink goes back to uh, a family, right? Yeah. Uh, this this is a this is a family. This particular brand is is a family, and and uh, I was reading about it, and it's they're they're. Their farm had burnt down. There was this big fire, and so they had to move. I think it was in Portugal, and they moved. They saved some of the, some of the family members died with the fire, and then the, but they saved a, a cherry plant, cherry tree, or whatever, and they moved to Italy. And he started and, and started really, it up again. So how old is this particular? It, it's material? it's really old. It dates back to the 1800s. Really? Yeah. Okay. This wow. So yeah. Uh, lucky for us because it's yeah. a it's a beautiful cherry liqueur. It's a staple. It's back. It's it's in a lot of these you know uh, prohibition yeah. style drinks. But it's coming back. It's more yeah, popular. Yeah. So, so this is a rum-based drink. Oh, okay. Of course, you know, Cuba. Cuba, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a rum-based drink if we're talking about Cuba, right? Now, how much rum are we going to put in this? So this is going to have two ounces of rum. Um, but I'm making both of us one, so I'm going to add a little bit okay, more. Okay, so a little <laughs> bit more. All right, so. I won't add quite as much. Okay. All right. And then it's got a pineapple juice. See, so you always have to have the juice in here. Perfect. And just a splash of grenadine. Yeah. Just, just a little bit of grenadine. So I don't use a lot of grenadine. It's very sweet, right? Very sweet. And, yeah, and uh, this just gets a splash as well. This doesn't get like, it's so not really quite a, a, an ounce or anything like that. So this is just uh, shaken. They're all, these are all shaken drinks. Okay. And uh, the, uh, sometimes these things can explode on you, right? <laughs> I've not had that happen to me. I'll take your word. For I will it. admit that I brought in my own shaker from my house because I'm comfortable with this one. Yeah. The ones we use, okay. in the, the ones we use in industry, you got to kind of jam off. I'm like, yeah, that that's sometimes that's not gonna happen. That sometimes <laughs> falls apart on me, so I'm not doing that. Yeah, my son does it. and He uses a glass one, you know, and right? I'm all, I always figure it's going to yeah. shatter. Right? So we yeah. have them here, right? But oh, yeah, I okay, thought, there you are, right, right, right. right. So yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah I'm going to use my old my old faithful. Okay. And you could drink, just pour it right out of here because it's got its own built-in strainer, right? But anyway, once again. It is a so just chill the glass, right? Yeah, okay. just chill the glass. This is this is what they do. It's and this was the ice dilutes the alcohol. All right, <laughs> we don't want that. So this does what a come lovely out, color. This does come out pink. Yeah, yeah. So it is a very. Uh, that looks really appetizing. Any garnish with this? Or? Yes. So this one does get the cherry as well. Okay. So oh wow. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So this is uh, the Mary Pickford, named after the silent film star Mary Pickford. And uh, it's uh, grenadine, cherry liqueur, and Cuba rum. So cheers. Let's taste this. Cheers. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, that is really deceiving. Oh, yeah. That is really <laughs> deceiving. 
you know, uh, mm. when you have that, you can Pineapple see. Pineapple and rum, yeah, so good well, together. How could that go wrong? How could that be a bad thing? So, uh, mm. But there are so many. I mean, the French 75, yeah. there are so many classic cocktails, mar martinis. You know, they all came from that, yeah, that, yeah. that era as well, right? Yeah. So all those drinks. There's something about a classic cocktail made by a professional bartender. Uh, you know, especially if you're somewhere on vacation. That's and not me, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got me fooled, uh, but it, 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 it lends to uh, uh, in enjoyment. You know, you're sitting on a beach somewhere, and someone serves you this wonderful drink, and it's usually a drink that you you harken back to when you think back in your holidays. Remember, we were there, and we right. had such and such. Yes, yeah. the first time I had a mojito was like that. Okay. I had okay. never had one before because I mean, mint in Newfoundland. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it's around now, but yeah, it wasn't yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. first time I saw this drink, and you know, had this drink with all this like stuff in it. I was like, what is that drink? And I was like, oh, the mojito, and that's, it's uh, so good. So do you sell, I mean, a lot of these cocktails here or? or? Yes, yeah, so we have a classic cocktail list. So we do a lot of the throw to yeah. the, the prohibition ones. And then we have our own signature cocktails as well. Yeah, yeah. But then of course you can get the whole, there's a whole host of, so what we what we pride ourselves in down here is a, the, a really big list of whiskey, okay. all kinds of whiskey. So we have, there's five kinds of whiskeys in the world. Of course, there's the Canadian whiskey, the bourbon whiskey, which is the American whiskey. Sure. Uh, Irish whiskey, Scotch whiskey, and now the Japanese whiskey. Right. So there's there's five whiskeys. So, but Japanese is new, of course. But yeah. uh, the other whiskeys are really a throwback to the Prohibition time because that's what they were drinking because that's, what, that's what they could get. Yeah. yeah right. That's yeah. what that's what you know Ireland was sending in and Canada was sending down yeah. and so. bootlegging, you know, whatever. And then of course, you know. Uh, talk about tourists coming in here. When tourists come in here, are they kind of surprised at this? Yeah, it, when they first come in, it's like when you come in from the daylight and, the, and it's so dark down here because we keep it di yeah, you know, yeah. uh, lit lightly with candlelights and stuff and it first takes you a while to get your eyes adjusted to uh -huh. it, right? But uh, it's very romantic. We have some curtains. That I was going to ask you, you have curtains uh, between the tables. So. Yeah, so you can have it open as one big group or you can have a different size groups or you can just have an intimate table for two and, and uh, yeah, so it's quite kind of really nice. And all the music we play down here is all the 20s. Uh, big band, speakeasy. I did not know that. All that style so. of music, yeah. So that's what we play down here. So if you want to hide away and have a yeah. wonderful cocktail from the Prohibition era, or something more modern, maybe you want to enjoy a cold cider down here from Yellow Belly, Underbelly, uh, on, uh, I'm going to say, George Street, Bex Cove, Water Street. That's right. Because <laughs> you have three addresses here, and this beautiful historic building. And if you don't believe us, come in and have a look at the beams in this building where the Great Fire stopped and uh, the people of the day managed to save it and I, I, maybe I'm wrong in this but is that a fireplace over in the corner over there or is that a... it is yeah at one time this was a hotel and this was the central kitchen for the hotel all right well Brenda O'Reilly you are a wealth of information you're wicked behind the bar and uh, I want to thank you for this and uh, hopefully we'll talk more about uh, the prohibition in coming episodes absolutely Brenda O'Reilly from O'Reilly's of course uh, yellow belly and underbelly I'm Brian O'Connell Thank you for joining us on this episode of Backyard Bartender. We'll be back again real soon. Cheers, everyone. If you have a comment about this program, 